Hey everyone, this is Cody coming to you from indoors today because it is absolutely blazing hot outside and you know I prefer to go outside and get the natural light in my videos, but it's just not happening today. Uh, so I'll be reviewing the ZWO AM3 today. This is a very lightweight harmonic drive mount, but it's capable of carrying quite the load. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I first want to talk about the weight of the AM3 compared to its load capacity. Now the AM3 mount only weighs 3.9 kilograms or roughly eight and a half pounds, light enough to carry it with one hand. Now, if you're not using a counterweight, the load capacity of the AM3 is eight kilograms or roughly 17 and a half pounds. That's about double what the AM3 weighs. So pretty impressive performance right there. Now, if you decide on using a counterweight, the mount can hold 13 kilograms or roughly 28 and a half pounds. That's a lot of weight, approximately three times what it weighs itself. So honestly, the AM3 might look small and you can carry it around, it's very portable, but it is capable of carrying pretty heavy loads. Now the thing you have to be careful with is the counterweight should not exceed five kilograms or 11 pounds. The nice thing about the AM3 is it's not so portable that you can't take bigger telescopes with you to a dark sky site. So for example, the AM3 works awesome with small refractors, and I think that's pretty obvious. Small refractors, small mount, they're gonna work really well together. However, the AM3 also works awesome with Newtonian telescopes, as well as smaller schmidt cassegrain telescopes, as long as you're keeping an eye on your weight. Do you need to use a counterweight or not? So if my Explore Scientific Comet Hunter, this is roughly 15 and a half pounds, but once it's loaded up with a camera and other things like a guide scope, that sort of thing, yeah, I'd probably use a counterweight on it. But the whole mount itself is still very portable. The only thing you just have to be very careful with is that you don't hit your tripod legs with your telescope. So if you're gonna use like a longer refractor or a Newtonian, you may wanna consider getting a pure extension for the AM3. Uh, but besides that, it works really well for telescopes that look too big for it. And that's really because of the harmonic drive mount being able to carry these awesome weight capacities. So honestly, you can use it with small refractors. You can use it with longer refractors, Newtonians, smaller Schmidt Cassegrains. The mount really can hold all of those as long as you don't push that weight capacity above that 28 pounds. Part of evaluating a product includes taking a look at the overall manufacturing, the fit and finish, etc. And the machining on the AM3 is awesome, just like on the AM5. Like, look how smooth these elevation locking knobs just glide. So excellent fit and finish there. The elevation adjustment knob, again, just very, very smooth. Same with the azimuth knobs. Now, they did get rid of the azimuth locking knobs on the AM3, which I'm totally in favor of because honestly, I didn't feel like they did a whole lot and they're just getting rid of things to snag on and, and more moving parts and that sort of thing. So AM3 fit and finish, everything looks good. Machining is excellent and they did a great job there. I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of the ZWO TC40 carbon fiber tripod on the AM5 mount. The primary reason for that is I use a heavier load on the AM5 mount and I get better guiding performance with a more durable tripod. Now on the AM3 mount, the TC40 rocks. These are both extremely lightweight. As you can imagine, carbon fiber tripod doesn't weigh very much. You have this 4.9 kilogram mount on top of it. Altogether, this is like the definition of a grab and go setup. You can chuck it in the back of your car and go to your dark skies. Well, don't chuck it in the back of your car. Lightly place it in the back of your car and you're ready to go image at a dark sky site. Now, I'm a pretty skinny guy, as you can tell. Uh, I'm sitting down, so I have no you know, back involved with this. I'm lifting with straight arms, and I can easily lift this straight over my head, no problem. If I grab it with my left hand underneath, easily lift it up. It weighs next to nothing, in my opinion. So when it comes to portability and good performance, the TC40 and the AM3 really go together nicely. Let's discuss the auto-guiding capabilities of the AM3 mount. Now, for this test, I used two different guide cameras. I used the ASI 2600 MC Duo. This has a built-in guide camera, which is basically a ASI 220mm mini. And then in the guide scope itself, I have a ASI 290mm mini. I've been taking several images with the AM3 and get excellent guiding results. So with the 220mm mini, I'm getting on average about 0.5 arc second error or so, night in and night out, as you can see here. That's pretty good. With the 290mm mini, it goes down to about 0 0.35, 0 0.4 arc second error, night in and night out. So the guiding performance on the AM3 is excellent. 
But there's one other thing I want to mention about the guiding. It's the consistency. So the guiding consistency is really what I love with this mount. So with like my Celestron AVX or CGX mount, sometimes I'll get like 0.5 arc seconds. Sometimes it'll be like 1.20 arc seconds. It kind of fluctuates night in and night out. And that depends on a lot of factors, right? With the AM3 though, I'm basically getting the same guiding results each and every night. Granted, you know, little tiny fluctuations, but nothing that drastic as with my other mounts. So there's really two great things about the AM3. Number one, it auto guides well. And number two, it has a very consistent guiding capability. And I really like that a lot because I can go outside night in and night out and know I'm gonna get pretty good guiding performance with my mount. Next, I'm going to perform a useless sound test. <laughs> and the reason I say useless is this is purely anecdotal. I don't have a decibel meter or anything like that. So you get to listen for the mount's total volume and frequency through my microphone. Now, all joking aside, I do think it'd be pretty cool if there was a standardized test for mounts in the astronomy industry to show you how loud they are. Maybe stick a decibel meter five or 10 meters away from a mount or both and run the mount at its fastest slew speed and at its slowest slew speed and report how loud the mount is. I think that would be really helpful for consumers to see that information before they buy a mount. Then again, there'd probably be some mounts that are pretty loud and decrease sales. So I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I will adv always advocate for more data on mounts and I think a standardized sound test would be pretty helpful. Okay, I digress. Now here's the useless sound test. So I'm gonna flick the mount on. Okay, all right, here we go. So you can see it's not too bad. Honestly, the frequency is pretty pleasant to the ear. Like some of the mounts that are really high pitched and whiny can be kind of annoying and loud. This one, the overall volume level or sound pressure from that is, is not bad. It's not super loud and it's pretty pleasant and smooth to listen to is kind of how I would describe it. But again, this is purely anecdotal. I'd love to see actual decibel test of various mounts to, to compare them. So hopefully you found that helpful. Now here's just some quick notes on the AM3 just as I wrap up the review here. The front panel here, obviously this is where you power the mount. You have a hand controller port as you saw when I performed the sound test. A auto guide port, this is ST4. Uh, you have a USB port for controlling the mount through like the ASI Air, this is USB type B. And it can also be used with Bluetooth as well which is a pretty cool feature on the AM3. One thing I'd love to see on a future version of the AM3 is that same style of saddle as the new AM5N has, where you have the USB-C to basically control the mount through the ASI Air, as well as power the ASI Air through the mount. That's been an awesome feature of the AM5N that I've really enjoyed using, and so I hope to see that on the AM3 in the future. Speaking of the AM5N, awesome mount, great guiding performance as well, and I hope to, uh, to review that shortly. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up my review of the ZWO AM3 Harmonic Mount. This is an incredibly portable mount, especially when paired with the ZWO TC40 carbon fiber tripod. I just love how grab and go it is, but it also gives you amazing performance too. So honestly, I've been totally happy with my AM3 mount. I just love how light it is and that I can still get some pretty decent sized telescopes on here. So anyway, again, hope you enjoyed the review. You found it helpful. Have a great day and clear skies.